Hi, welcome back to Dad or Alive. <laughs> Mr. Vega looks like he's wearing a sesame seed bun. What? <laughs> Do you mean the jacket? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, like, between episodes, I noticed the uh, the man bun he was wearing. That was actually the first thing I looked at once you said that. I was like, what do you mean? I don't understand what you mean, Sesame Street. <laughs> oh, the jacket. Yeah. All right. See, I said that to Mr. Vega. What was his first name? I don't remember. I think it came up for, like, one dialogue box, and then that was it. Yeah, I don't remember. I only remember the name for the kid, Lucian. Lucian, yeah, that. Fuck <laughs> All right. Yeah, this was the character I said I had interest in just because of the uh, his appearance. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small student's desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Alright. Where were we? Now who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? Oh, is this in the middle of a class? Apparently. Oh! Oh. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Yeah, it's very good. Oh. The, whole cl- the whole class erupts in laughter. All right. All right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period <laughs> rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Or not, I guess. Dude, you gotta bring down the pain. Yeah. Goodness. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Middle schoolers, right? That Lucian dude out in the, the hall was a middle schooler? I, I was a very tall middle schooler. Alright. I shot up to six feet at fifth grade, so... I was a very tall middle schooler. Don't you teach high schoolers? Both. You know, budget cuts. Well, there you go. That's your answer. So I guess this particular school is... Okay. Right. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Please, call me Hugo. Ah. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but... As I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. She's... You only just started at the school. (laughs) You only just moved. Did she start before you moved? Well, maybe we just moved to another house within the same district. Okay, yeah, it could be. Because I I had a time, like, I was living in Colorado for, for a while. Yeah. And I was in one place, and I moved, and... I still, like, I, I was moved to a different house, but I still went to the same school for a bit. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's, it can be a thing. What's going on? Man has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk it up to senioritis, but... That's so strange. thought Amanda always shared everything with me. I didn't even cross my mind that something might be wrong. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Hmm. Does she t- does she bottle things up? I don't know. It's... I feel like it's one of those where if you say that, then it sets that t- tendency to her character. Let's say that we just moved. We just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Oh, excuse me. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal, and I would appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I know how important art school is to her. I would hate to see her miss out on a scholar or miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Anytime. On my way out, I stop, thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Yes. They ever catch that rye? <laughs> Damn it. Yes. Aw. Okay, I will say like that despite... <laughs> <sighs> I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. And I must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. 
pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Battaglia the whole time? <laughs> that hasn't aged well. Why? Mario Batali has recently gotten in trouble for some sexual misconduct oh, has on the he? Food Network. Why do you think he hasn't been on Food Network in a while? I don't fucking know. I don't watch cable TV. I haven't. I didn't know he was in trouble. You need to keep up with your culinary shows or you're dead to me. Because I was actually... I actually was a huge fan of Mario Batali. Yeah. I didn't know he got into some shit. Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay. It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Oh. Uh, you know what? Let's go to the mall. <laughs> Does that sound good to you? Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Because I could ruin cereal. Is that what you want? No, it's not. Let's go to the mall. Because I need to talk to you, and I'd rather be in a public place so you won't embarrass yourself by making a scene. In a public place, she can embarrass me by making a scene. Yes, but she wouldn't want to embarrass herself at the mall. So she would True. keep it to herself. True, okay. Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I'm buying you lunch. I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find they have to keep things hidden from their parents. That's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar sin situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you! Have you been reading my tweets? No, should I? You have a Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> That's what, that would be my response. It's like, you have a Twitter? When did this fucking happen? What? Never mind. <laughs> Look, sweetie. Mr. Vegas said you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. Yeah, he, he brought that to my attention. Maybe no. I thought you liked Mr. Vegas class. It's fine. He's fine. That doesn't sound fine. It's teenager speak for, oh my god, everything's on fire. God damn it. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. She's talking to someone. What's a funny? Uh, it's a... I don't think you get it. Fucking excuse you? Okay. Who are you texting? Noah. You winning, son? Who's Noah? My friend. You have friends? Does he go to your school? Yep. Do you like Noah? What? No! Dad! Ugh. I can't believe you would... Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you... You're putting up a whole lot of... I had me does think she protested too much. About to say, that is a whole lot of defense and protest over do you like Noah? Ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, okay. Jeez. I've already said okay several times. This is like a whole <laughs> lot of needless this defense. This is a whole, light, a whole lot of parenting. This yeah. is so real. <laughs> this is going well. God, my daughter's 12 and this feels real. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. <laughs> she leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. <laughs> to them all, then! 
Jesus. Laserdisc is clearly the superior digital video format. Uh, let's give you lemons, parsley. Okay. Make an omelet. <laughs> we arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Heck yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Better. <laughs> we approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. Perfect. It's like, give me that Italian food. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. Uh, sounds like Villa Pizza for me. <laughs> God damn it. What are you in, in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? All of the above? Yes, please. I extend my hand to her. Can we get one of those marinara smoothies? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Will you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. These are bad. These are very bad. Just the way I like them. But also strangely delicious? We have to eat through the pain. God damn it. We enjoy the fluorescently cheesy... Jesus. Fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're out of nachos. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's radioactivity. See, I like the kind that's... that like has a slightly metallic taste to the nacho cheese. Mm. Like Rico's nachos. Oh, uh, what? Rico's nachos. A... What's Rico's nachos? It's so... the best brand of nachos. They usually do with theaters, but like the drive-in that I used to go to had the same deeply racist uh, ad that always played from like the what? 70s it was like Rico the main mascot he's like I'm Rico and he's Nacho he's Peppy and this little jalapeno pepper pokes his head out from behind the curtain and it just goes see <laughs> oh yeah that's it, it's great oh. I love it oh okay look up the old Rico's Nachos commercials I'm, you'll I'm love them I'm sure it sounds fantastic so someone's been bothering me for a while can you explain memes to me? Oh, God. <sighs> Which meme? All. All memes. Every last one of them. I'm so glad I understand them. I mean, I'm just on the threshold of being too old to understand them and to I'm, get mad at them. Yeah, I'm, I'm at that point where, like, I'll start to understand a meme about a week after it starts to decline. So I'm just catching on to it as people are just starting to get sick of it. I'm still trying to get people to explain to me the origin of the dab and why it's both loved and hated. You mean it's like, why it's hated? I don't understand it, but Why yeah. it's hated? Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all of us youths have already done the joke to death. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump on, in on a meme, but based on how long it takes for it to make, uh, to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it immediately and isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! <laughs> also, the term meme was actually coined by uh, like a stuffy old British author. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Referring to genetic information being passed orally like a gene or like humorous information or anything having a mimetic quality instead of a genetic quality cool yeah Richard Dawkins author of The Selfish Gene good book neat can I we, knew something can, can we continue oh shit what up <laughs> dad please anyway changing the subject where to now want to go to that goth store do we have to what you know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment, despite being an exact representation of the establishment? I, I don't know what store you're talking about. So, we both know what store they're talking about, I because I love that store. I haven't been to malls very often in the past several years. Is Hot Topic still a thing? Yeah. Okay, so they have not gone out of business? No. Nope. In fact, weirdly, oh. they're actually a, a big competitor. For the kind of stuff that my store offers that's not video game related. 
Oh, okay. They even almost bought Think Geek when we stepped in, and we'd like, nope, we're buying it, and we slapped them. Okay. Yeah. I like Think. I like uh, Hot Topic. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets, and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Dude, you got to be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. <laughs> oh, that one. Because remember, there are kind of a lot of those kind of stores. <laughs> yeah. Also, I caught a glimpse of something at the top right. Okay. Like a little pink panel that like appeared then disappeared. I have no idea. Was it like an autosave thing? I or? think so. Okay. All right. Because I saw it pop for a second. There was something written in it, but I yeah. didn't because that was the first time I saw it. So I couldn't. I didn't think to read what was in it. Also, most hot topics nowadays, the glass uh-huh. up front by the register just has like weird import candy and Disney themed makeup palettes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Like a pickle flavored Pocky. Fuck, excuse me? Uh. Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is! You can see, still see the outline, kinda. Kinda. I'm so proud. Speech! Amanda. Speech! 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 Alright, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. What the hell am I doing? (laughs) Alright, here we go. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda Ann Crust had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead goth and beyond to buy (laughs) rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. (laughs) I bow my head. Oh, hey, chain wallets. (laughs) While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in a dead goth and beyond. Uh, Ironic mugs? Screw up, band t-shirts. I barely know any of these bands. Cannibal Bone Party? Doesn't seem like music I enjoy, but they must be really happy that a retail outlet is carrying their merchandise. I hope their parents are really proud of them. (laughs) You never know. Yeah, I I think I know who this guy is, and it's like the Dracula-looking dude. Oh, dear. You want me to do it? Or do you want to do Uh, it? I'll do it. Okay. What kind of attitude does he have? Is he like... Like, full-on Victorian gentleman... Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stock. Jesus Christ! Yeah, Dracula! <laughs> Calm the fuck down, Alucard! I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. Uh, is that you, or. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian-inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the mark, trademark of Edwardian dressage. Is it dressage or dressage? Either. Alright. Although dressage is also when they like make horses prance around, so I don't know. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Goddamn. Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager? That's right, you are the manager. You tell him! Why don't you fuck off, Brian? (laughs) You tell that dreck you Karen what to do. (laughs) I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, oh dude. my god, he even has black fingernails. I'm ar- I'm done with him already. Man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. 
Can't tell if they're Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. <laughs> Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Hey, Deadtron 5000. <laughs> yes, I'll buy it for you. Unless it says fuck the police, then I'm, you're going to have to put it back. No, then you have to grab two. <laughs> God damn it. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I'm worried she'll pull something. <laughs> That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. Of course his name is fucking Damien. Why Gee, I wonder if Lucian is his son. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> she hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. The cashier didn't even get a portrait art. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. All right. This ran a little bit long, but I just kind of wanted to see how the whole vampire nonsense would play out. Yeah. So, so before we continue... Yes. Or before we close it out, so yeah. far, uh -huh. who do you like? Hugo. Hugo? I like Hugo. I will say, I also like... Uh, I kind of like Matt. Okay, yeah. Hugo and Matt are pretty cool. Matt has that, like, the, the whole music thing, and I kind of dig... Also, he's one of the few people that are... Equally as awkward as my character. Yeah, without so the kinda... creepy children thing. Yeah. But the, the also the other guy with the kids, he's got a wife. I don't care about him and, oh, and kids. The fuck he wants and, and creepy kids. Yeah. Mmm. Also, Manda yeah. Panda, great kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll we'll spend plenty of time with Manda Panda next time. 